This video presents the main updates in the latest 2017 version of Archiframe, which has just been released. I will go through the most important updates from the introduction of teamwork to the implementation of the mirror a copy tool. For a full list of all updates, including more minor ones, please see the PDF linked in the video's description. The first new feature of Archiframe is support for Archicad 21. Overall, Archiframe is now compatible with Archicad versions 16 to 21 for Windows and 19 to 21 for Mac. Another important improvement is the introduction of trace reference layers to projections. Here you can see an element elevation where a trace reference is displayed. In this case, the main frame is projected as a trace reference to the interior studding and boarding. Note that the dimension lines interact with the trace reference layer, showing, for instance, the amount of oversize in the interior studding layer relative to the framing layer. The trace reference settings are set in the AF element XML file. If you wish to customize your settings, contact us at Archiframe to let us know what kind of projections you want. We will then edit the XML to achieve your goal. Next, we look at Archiframe's new teamwork feature, which follows the principles of Archicad teamwork. So if you have an Archicad teamwork file, you can now reserve an Archiframe object and be confident that no one else is editing its settings or elevations. Reserving objects is possible through the teamwork button in the Archiframe main window. With this command, Archiframe reserves not only your selection, but also all Archiframe objects relating to the selected element. It does not matter if these related objects are located in the elevation view, the floor plan, or the 3D view. They will be selected in any case. Now let's move on to the shop list. In the new version of Archiframe, shop lists can be customized according to your needs. As with the trace reference settings, this is done in the Archiframe element XML file. And as before, we at Archiframe will edit the XML for you once you tell us what kind of shop list you would like to have. In this example, the shop list is customized so that it contains objects from specific structural layers. The new version of Archiframe comes with a new version of the demo house. Slight changes have been made to the project. It now contains new structural types and the library version has also been updated. The file can be found in the Archiframe samples folder. In the rest of this tutorial, I will use the updated demo house as my base. Now I will introduce some completely new Archiframe features, starting with weight calculation. This tool allows you to calculate the weight of any Archiframe selection, and also to find the center of gravity for elements. I will open the element elevations, where the center of gravity calculation is displayed. Then I'll open the custom elements window to define some settings for the calculation. Our wall type is demo exterior. First, I'll set the display mode from the composite settings section. Here I can control which projection to show the weight calculation in, the top or front projection. In this case, I'll choose the top one. So I'll write three in the top projection field and leave zero in the front one. To learn about the display options, press Alt-Shift-F1 to open the Archiframe user manual. If you scroll down to page 50, you'll find a list of different display options for the weight calculation. So, calculation mode number 3 includes two calculations if the element has doors or windows, one including and the other excluding the weight of the doors and windows. In this mode, the calculation is positioned above the elevation drawing. 
The weight calculation also has many other options, which are covered in the user manual section 10.2. Once the display settings are set, the next step is to define the densities of the element's different materials. To add, for example, the density of the interior gypsum boards, select the gypsum layer from the list and click Edit slash New Type. Then, in the weight settings, I can choose whether I want this layer to be included in the weight calculation. If so, I can set the density for the material. This process should be repeated for all the layers in the element. Note that the element we're working with contains doors and windows whose mass needs to be taken into account in the calculation. We must therefore separately define which wall layer contains doors and windows. These should only be included in one layer in the element. We recommend the main framing layer. As you can see from the warning, the way the walls and windows is not currently being calculated in any layer. So let's add them to the main framing layer. In the weight settings, tick the boxes calculate doors and calculate windows. Now you can set the weight of the door leaf per square meter and the weight of the door frame per meter. And you can do the same for the window glass and the window frame. Finally, update the element elevations to display the weight calculation. First, we need to select one of the planks, and then update the elevations. As you can see, the weight calculation is located above the top projection, just like we wanted. The symbol below represents the weight with windows and doors, while the one above represents the weight without windows and doors. Next, let's take a look at Archiframe's improved oversize settings. In the new version, it is possible to set oversizes separately for doors and windows. To do so, select the element and open its settings, and then go to More Settings. Let's set 100mm of oversize for the door so that we can see a clear change in the elevation. And I'll leave the window oversize as it is. To see the change, I again have to update the drawing with the update element openings command. Note that the lintel on top of the door will disappear once I update, while the one above the window stays in place. This is because we updated the door settings. The last thing we will look at in the projection view is the new cleanup elevations command. As you can see, there are collisions between texts, planks, and dimension lines in this elevation. If I update the drawing with cleanup elevations turned on, these collisions will be eliminated. Cleanup thereby reduces the need for manual editing of elevation drawings and saves time. Next, we will turn to the updated planking tool for floor and roof slabs. In Archiframe 2017, it is possible to determine a direction for floor and roof planks. To demonstrate how this works, I'll first create an Archicad slab with a hole in the middle. Next, I'll draw fill on the edge of the slab. Say the fill is 1200mm wide. I'll use this fill to set the bounds around my Archiframe element. To pick up the fill's boundary, I'll select Get Marquee at the top of the element dialog. Then, I'll select Demo Floor as my element type. And next, I'll set the anchor or the position of the element. In More Settings, I'll set the elevation drawing location to the third story floor plan where all the other elevations are located. Then, I'll go back to the main menu and create the element. Archiframe now prompts you to indicate the direction of the element. This can be done by drawing a line parallel to the desired beam or joist direction. Now that we have the element, I'll give it an ID, FL01. 
and then I'll create the planks. So now you can see the floor joists which are parallel to the line I drew earlier. Next, I'll repeat this procedure for the remaining part of the slab, this time giving the structure a different direction. So now I'll give the planks a perpendicular direction compared to the previous ones. Then I'll give the element a new ID. And now I'll create planks. Finally, I'll demonstrate the new and long-awaited mirror copy feature which has been implemented for ArchiFrame elements. The commands move a copy as well as rotate a copy also now work. So I'll select two floor elements I just created and execute the standard ArchiCAD mirror copy command on it. The ID of the original element is also copied to the new one so it is important to give the replica a new ID. In this case, I'll give the new elements the IDs FL03 and FL04. The element elevation drawing is not copied during this process. To create an elevation for the new floor element, simply press the update button. When the update is finished, I can navigate to the elevation drawing using the arrow tool. So there. Mirror copy is especially useful because it can be used not just for single elements, but complex combinations of elements, such as this demo house. Using mirror or copy will save you a great deal of time compared to the alternative of manually remodeling all elements if you wish to mirror them. To mirror a copy of all the demo house's elements, select all the elements in the house using, for example, ARCHICAD's Find and Select tool. With this tool, I'll select all objects with the name ARCHIFRAME element. And now we're ready to make the mirror copy. And now it's finished. And that's it for this tutorial, thank you for watching.